Hello, welcome to my little tutorial on how to make spawns for Twitch integration in the Brock Galactic, or at least how to set up your spawns in Twitch integration. Uh, so if you're new, you're probably just downloading your mods, like uh, is happening in the corner right now for me. Uh, you'll see them on the side there, but if you want to see your actual mod details, you can click Escape and go to the Modding tab and you will be able to see what's downloading. Sometimes it does this, don't worry about it. It's just mod AO being weird. Uh, in this specific scenario, we are only gonna be focused on the Twitch integration mod. Uh, I don't know if that overlay will pop over for you actually, but the Twitch integration mod, let me bring up an image so you can see it. Twitch integration, it'll look like that on drg.mod.io. And uh, for just the sake of being able to show what an expansion pack looks like, we are also downloading the SGG spawns expansion pack. So once you've subscribed on mod.io, uh, your mods will install like this, and then you can hit apply. Your lobby. It is highly recommended that you restart your game as well after you're installing some new mods. But in this case, my mod was already installed. It was just doing an update. Uh, so once you've installed that, we want to hit H to open up our mod hub menu. In this menu, you'll have all your mods with options. I have a bunch. You'll probably only see Twitch integration. And because we're testing the SGG spawns expansion, you'll see SGG spawns. So if we go into Twitch integration, we've got a lot of details about how it all works. Um, a wiki page should be the first place that you can go to check out what's all available in your current loadout, what all the spawns do, what kind of chat controls they have, just little little informational snippets in case you need it. Uh, the main settings should be your next area. Uh, I like having my mission set to 12. I like my loose nitro and gold to be kind of low. Uh, you can reward Nitron kills. This will make it so that when you kill an enemy, Nitro pops out. We've also got... Uh, oh, this isn't finished yet. But we've also got a grace period before the queue starts. So that's like the beginning of the mission. A uh, whole bunch of options. Visual options. The styles you want for your, par your bar. The uniqueness scale, which is how... Like... the Basically the rarity of the items that pop up and like how varied they can be in the random pulls and difficulty scale is like how many of each item can pop up in the random pulls so for example this would be like a more rare or unique enemy would appear and then this would be do you want like one or five of that enemy to appear so that's what those two settings do um your follower tab uh actually let's let's leave these so follow subs gift subs bits and rewards are how you're going to do your redeems other than the pulls if you're just doing pulls, you don't need any of this. You can actually stop right here and just turn on enable pulls and it'll do all the randomization for you. But if you want to set up channel rewards and follows and those kind of things, then you're going to want to continue. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a new spawn. Um, so new, you won't have any of these here. We go to our new group and our new spawn. So this will be the uh, test group. Text group. Test group. You can tell I write a lot of mods and I have to do stuff with test text. Um, so this is the name of our group, so you'll see it change down here, test group. And this first spawn, we are going to spawn, I don't know, golden loot bugs. So I'm going to name it loot bug gold. So now you'll see in the bottom, it does loot bug gold. Uh, you can choose the nameplate for it. Uh, if you want this spawn enabled or not in your group, you'll see the little toggle in the corner go off and on. That's whether or not it'll spawn in this group. Uh, the number you want to spawn and the chance you want it to spawn. So the chance is only really important if you're putting multiple things in this group or you want it like... You want it to have a chance not to spawn, if that makes sense. So, like, if you put, like, four things in this group and you put this at, like, 50 and the next one at 70 and the last one at 30, 
it's not a combined thing. It's each one would have like so fifty. This one would have a fifty percent chance that it will spawn when this group is called, and there's a fifty percent chance it just won't spawn. So generally, you want this at a hundred. Uh, you have additional options here. Target all players will make one of these golden loot bugs spawn on each player in your lobby. Uh, delay is how long before it spawns. And the random pooled is if you want to make like a lottery system for your spawns in this group. And I'll get to that in a second. Position is the distance from the player and what terrain you want to spawn on. You can also snap it to... Like, actually, I haven't used snap too much, but I'm pretty sure it snaps it to the player or like the target location, which is weird, but it could be really fun. But the main things you're going to want are the distance. So 500 is pretty close. A thousand still not that very not that far, um, but this will work for any terrain. Generally, you don't want these numbers to be the same. So like if I did. If I did a thousand and a thousand, that would mean it's only looking at a point between a thousand and a thousand to try and spawn the enemy, and it doesn't have a lot of room to do that. So when people put things like ceiling, and they put, oh, I want it to spawn on the ceiling. I keep not doing enough. 2,000 away from me, which is about 20 meters in the game. Uh, that's not really going to spawn the ceiling very often because it's not. It's only going to be looking for a ceiling around 2,000 meters away or 2,000 units away. So instead, you probably want to do a range that's at least 500 apart. Uh, I like to do, if I want something like semi close, I like to do between 1,000 and 2,000. So that way it's given like enough room to kind of spawn. Uh, next, chat controls. These are if you want chat to be able to do something. So let's say we want them to be able to spawn confetti on our loot bug when they type in hashtag party. And the cooldown on that's going to be one second because I don't know. <laughs> I want them to be able to party all the time. Uh, so that'll basically be the person who spawned to this loot bug can type hashtag party. You don't have to type the hashtag in. It's always going to be there. Uh, it'll spawn this confetti anytime they type that in. Then we have mutators. You don't have to use chat controls or mutators, by the way. These are optional. Uh, in mutators, we've got a whole bunch of different ones. You can see our expansion pack here as well. So let's say we wanted this enemy to... Oh, what's a good one here? Red, red sugar. Uh, so they're going to be made of red sugar. Uh, if I'm not entirely sure, I can always go, what's the mutate of red sugar? Turns into sugar red and they drop sugar crystals. So that's an easy way. Like I looked for mutators. For chat controls, I can see that confetti throws confetti. So you can always go to your wiki page if you need to figure out what you're like working with. Uh, on death. You can enter the name of another group in this list. So, like, if I wanted it to spawn, uh, I don't know, a broken equipment event on death, then that'll trigger once this test group is done, or once this enemy dies. And then you can scale it. If you want to set, like, how fast it goes, how long it lives. Like, lifespan, if I put in 15, it'll kill itself after 15 seconds. Uh, the 3D scale is like how big it is, so I can make a loot bug that's oh, 10 times bigger sounds kind of insane. Let's do two times bigger. And time scale. Now, generally, you don't want to do this in the in the space rig, but you can test your spawn. So that's the loot bug. They'll always be kind of weird in the space rig, and sometimes they won't even work in the space rig. Um, but just I wanted to show you an example of like what this looks like. You see the name plate above it with the icon. Uh, it's got the red sugar on it. It's two times bigger. This is just the shadow because loot bugs have a shadow and in the space rig, they're not supposed to be here. But excellent. So there's your spawn setup. So that's absolute. That's like the most basic spawn setup you can do. If you want to do like a single spawn, then we would go into, let's say, our follows. Um, I already have stuff in here. Uh, basically, you would add a spawn and then select your group. So in this case, test group. And I want to spawn one of my test group. And that's it. You're set up for follows. <laughs> I'm going to delete this just so I don't have it in, in mind when we're doing the next part. Subscription, same thing. You just add a spawn and it'll be one of your group drop downs. Same with gift subscriptions. 
the more complicated stuff comes when we get to bits and rewards. Uh, one more thing I want to drop off about spawns before we get into bits and rewards is that random pooled button I was talking about. So in the random pooled area, if you check it off, you'll notice it says random loot bug gold. The reason it does that is because now if we add a new spawn to this group and let's say we're going to do a regular loot bug. Boop. And we'll name this one loot bug. If we set this as random pooled as well, it's going to pick one of these when we do test group. And you can do that for as many as you want. I have an example up here where it's a whole bunch of demons that can spawn, but it'll pick a random one of these. But because of this last one is not in the pool, it'll also spawn that. So it'll pick one of these seven spawns here and then one and then always spawn this uh, this tweak spawn. So that's kind of a way you can kind of throw something in with a random item if you want to do it that way. If you ever want to remove a group, you can either A, delete the spawn, like I don't want this loot bug in this group anymore. Boop, now we just have the golden loot bug. Or if you don't want the group anymore, boom, your group is gone. Now, when we go to bits, you'll be able to add bits ranges. You won't have all this here, but you add a bits range and then you can set the minimum bits and the maximum bits for that range. And it'll pop up with like a little thing like this. I have mine all set up in steps just so it's like a little easier to organize, but you can do like one bit to 20 bits, then 10 bits to 20 bits, and then, you know, 20 bits to 20 bits. And then they would all go off whenever someone spent that 20 bits, if that makes sense. Like as long as your max bits is above what they're spending and your min bits is below or on what they're spending, then it'll trigger. And it's the same thing as the gift subs. You add a spawn and then you select it from the drop down. And the drop downs will always be whatever you have in your spawn section. So see how I have medical and shredder pet. These are from my medical. Sorry, I just passed Shredder Pet. They're from my Shredder Pet, which spawns a Shredder Pet. And my Medical, which spawns a Shield per player. One Resupply Pod. And some Red Sugar. So that's what that one does. Then there's Rewards. This is probably the most complicated section. So, uh, it's still not that complicated. But, you know, just want to warn you. So first you want to create a new reward. I've got a lot in here, so I can kind of show one off. So I have a reward called DRG Time to Flee. And what this does is this name you put in here has to be the exact name of your reward on your Twitch channel. So DRG space dash space time to flee has to be exactly that. When that reward is redeemed, this will trigger. Uh, well, as long as it's enabled. But when it triggers, again, same as your subs, gift stubs, follows, you add what spawns you want in and how many of that group you want to spawn. So in this case, I chose fleas and I want to spawn one. And then if I go check, I have my fleas. Fleas are actually probably an older one. Yeah, I've got my fleas and it spawns either a fire flea or a boom flea. So it'll spawn one of those whenever someone does the time to flee reward. And you're all set up, basically. You can make as many spawn groups as you want. They can have either like random items or one item, like the shredder pet. And then once you've made your spawn groups, you just plug them into whatever section you want. You can make as many rewards as you want. You can make as many bits as you want. Uh, gift subs trigger whenever someone uh, like gifts a sub uh, subscriptions is when they subscribe and follow is when they follow your channel be a little weary about follows though because if someone follows unfollows follows and it'll keep triggering it or if you're getting like a bunch of follows at once it'll keep triggering this so just a little bit of a heads up there but uh, yes that's all there is to it enjoy setting up your spawns 
Uh, I will make a separate thing on how to set up the app. And uh, in the meantime, or actually I'll attach it at the end of this video. Welcome to the second part of the Twitch integration tutorial. We are currently on the desktop. Uh, as you'll see, I've downloaded the companion app from the DRG modding Discord server and unzipped it. Uh, if you haven't gotten this yet, hop onto the DRG modding Discord. Uh, it's right in the Twitch integration section. You'll be able to download it and unzip it. Once you've unzipped it, though, you will have this massive folder with a bunch of stuff in it. All you need to worry about is the viewer at interactivity.exe. If you click on that, it'll open up this window. In here, you just have to set your mods directory, which in my case is eSteam Library, Steam Apps, Deep Rock, FSD Mods. This will probably not be the right directory right away. Like sometimes it is, but mine said G Drive, so mine was not correct right away. If you need to change it, simply browse that directory. If you don't know where the directory for your Steam Apps Common Deep Rock Galactic FSD mods is, then you can easily go into your Steam, manage on your Deep Rock game, and browse local files. This will open another window, which will take you to the main directory. Then you just have to go to FSD, mods, and here's your folder. You can even click on the top and it'll give you the full link to your folder. This is on Windows, but I'm sure there's a similar method on other platforms. Excellent. Now that you've got that set up, you just have to click on Get My Authentication Token, which will open a window, ask you to log into Twitch, and it'll give you a string of characters. You paste those characters into here and hit Connect. Uh, the bottom will tell you when you're connected, and a message will pop up in your Twitch chat to show that it's connected. Uh, you can currently see a queue. I have zero items in my queue right now, but you'll see a queue when people are redeeming things. And, of course, when you're done, you can click disconnect to disconnect the app. 